Thanks for clicking on this video. This is a quick preview of the material we are making today. It is an EV render in the viewport. I'm just scrolling around right now. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you that before you get started so you know what you're getting from this video. And with that said, let's get into it. So first, you're going to hit Shift A, go to Mesh and grab an Icosphere. Go over into here, this panel here, and set the subdivisions to 5. Then right click and Shade Smooth. Then select your camera. Go to the focal length and switch it to a 102. What this does is if we go to our camera view, it gives us a nice up close view of our mesh. The next step is going to be to go into the rendered preview. Hit this drop down right here and disable scene world. And I'm going to be using this forest looking HDRI right here. It's built into Blender automatically. And then if we go over here to our EV settings, you can also do this in cycles. But if you're in EV, make sure to check ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. Then you'll be good to go. Next, head over to the shading workspace. Just make sure you have a 3D viewport panel open somewhere and then a shader node panel open somewhere else. Then go to your camera view, go to your render preview and make sure you just do the same thing with the scene world here and uncheck it. Then with your Icosphere selected, press new material. I'm gonna call this parchment pages like this. Then we're just simply gonna press shift A, add a noise texture like this. Then with this selected, we can press Control T, and if that doesn't work, go over here to Edit Preferences, go to Add-ons and search for the Node Wrangler add-on like this and hit the checkbox, then you'll be good to go. Then just come back, select your noise texture, and then press Control T then. Then you want to take the object from the texture coordinate into your mapping node, and if you Control Shift and left click this noise texture, you can preview what it is doing. Then we're gonna switch the detail on this noise texture to a 16 and the roughness to a 0.7. This is going to be used for our bump, so we're going to press Shift A and search for a bump node, like this. Then we're going to take the factor from the noise texture and put it into the height of the bump node. Then change the strength on the bump node to a 0.1. Then we Control Shift left click to preview. We can see that this just gives it a little bit of roughness on the surface of our paper. And because it's parchment, there is actually some surface imperfections like that. So then we take the normal from this bump and plug it into the normal of the principal shader, like that. Then we're going to factor this noise texture into our roughness. So to do that, we'll press Shift A and search for a color ramp, like this. Then we'll take the factor of the noise texture into the factor of this color ramp. And then on this color ramp, we're going to change this black value here to a 0 0.6 on the value scale, right there. Then on this other one, we're going to leave this one at a pure white, so that is a 1 on the value scale. Then we're gonna take the color from this and plug it into the roughness of the principal shader. And if we control shift and left click on this color up, we can see that it's giving us some contrast here, but not too much because we want the paper is pretty rough. It's not gonna reflect light very easily. So the next step is gonna to be to do our color. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp. We're gonna leave this one on black and white because we're gonna play with the contrast and the noise texture a little bit. So we'll take the factor of the noise texture into the color ramp. Control shift to left click to preview. Then we're simply going to take this black and move it into a 0 0.3 just to up the contrast a little bit. Then we'll press Shift A, add ourselves a color ramp, and this is going to be our colors. So to start out, we're going to go ahead and hit the plus sign two times to give us two more colors. Then on this black, the hex value that I'll be using, I'll go ahead and read it off to you a couple times real quick. It is going to be a 742800. Again, that is a 742800 like that. Then the second one, we're gonna position it at a 0 0.1 right here. Then I'll read this hex value off for you again. There's gonna be a 9C6, C29. Again, that is a 9C6, C29, like that. Then this third stop, we're gonna position at a 0.475. So 0.475 like that. Go to the hex value. And the hex value on this is going to be an F2C B92. Again, that is an F2C B92. And as you can see, the color is starting to come together here really nicely. And this last one, we're going to position the stop at a 0.65 on the position right here. Then the hex value on this is going to be an FFE 5BD. Again, that is an FFE 5BD, like that. And this is our color for the parchment paper. And it's just giving us some old wear and tear in the color and it's looking pretty good here. Then we take this color and plug it into the base color. 
Now that we've done that, we can control shift and left click to preview the principled shader. And this is what we have right now. Some of you may think the bump is a little bit strong. So if you want, you can always decrease the strength to a 0.05 and it's a little bit smoother depending on what you're going for. I'll go ahead and leave it at 0.05 just for this tutorial. So if you want to leave it like this, you can because we're going to be creating a duplicate. This is just going to be apartment pages. And then we're going to duplicate this one by hitting this uh, right here, the two folders on top of each other. And then we're going to call this one Partnic, uh, Parchment Pages Book. And this is the one you saw in the thumbnail where we get the book pages. And the reason we duplicated it is because we want two different versions of our material. We want the one where we have one page showing. We just want this one. And we have the one where we have the side of a book or something. We want this one. And it's a really easy change. All we have to do is hit Shift A and search for a wave texture like this. Take the vector from this mapping node into the vector of the wave texture. And if we control shift left click to preview, we can see that it's not exactly facing the way we want it to. So we're simply gonna take this drop down here on the X and change that to Z like that. Then the scale for this one is gonna be a 20. The distortion will be a five. The detail will be a 16 and everything else will be left on default. Then all we have to do is factor this into our bump. So we'll press shift A and search for another bump node like so. Take the color from this into the height of the new bump node. And then take the normal from this into the normal of the other bump node. And if we control shift left click to preview, we now have our pages here. And as you can see, the bump on this is a little bit too strong for my liking. So we're gonna take the strength on this bump and put it at like 0.75. And that sort of decreases the contrast here between the bump. Anyways, obviously you can play with the bump if you want. The older you want the book to look, the more uh, the higher strength. The newer you want the book to look, the lower strength because there's obviously gonna be less distance in between the pages and it's gonna be less warping. But yeah, something a good strength to settle around is somewhere between a 0.3 and a 0.8. I would say those are the best ranges to settle around. I'll probably settle around a 0.5 on the strength. And I think that looks pretty good. And with that said, that is gonna be the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed, and now you have two materials. And if you want uh, to know how to rotate this on a book, say you have a vertical book and you're like, oh, my texture's only going sideways. All you have to do is come in here to the rotation and you can just hit a 90 on the X and it rotates at 90 that way, but you're like, oh, but what if my book's facing the other way? Just take this to a zero, switch the Y to a 90, and you can just rotate it around like that. And it looks pretty good. So that is the end of the tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed. And if you have any other materials you'd like to learn how to make, go ahead and drop the names of those materials in the comments below, and I'll figure out a way to make them and show you how to do it. So I'll see you all in the next one.